but her moderate to severe eczema could make it hard for her. Now I'm staying ahead of it. Dupixent helps heal your skin from within so they can have clearer skin and less itch. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about Dupixent. Back in the world. Yeah. Our Pink exclusive talking new music, new tour, and putting daughter Willow to work. I want my kids to see what it looks like to have a mom that's a boss. Oh, and you better believe she's a mom and mom. She's a boss. Yes, she is. She's okay. Before we go, NCIS LA. Happening now. It turns out San Antonio police were frequent visitors to a home where dogs attacked and killed an elderly man. So many numerous calls and complaints about the couple who lived there and why those calls were not just about the dogs. More fog and drizzle to prepare for, along with the cold front that's now in North Texas. I'll let you know when it's going to pay us a visit in just a bit. It's a popular, convenient go-to food, canned tuna. But there are concerns about high levels of mercury. We'll tell you about the popular brands that were tested and the warning we have for pregnant women. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, 100 calls and complaints to police at the home where a deadly dog attack happened. A home where dog owners Kristen Moreno and Abilene Snyder lived for two years. Nearly two weeks after that deadly dog attack on Douglas Street, neighbors tell us they had reached out to their councilwoman along with police with their concerns. They never heard anything back from their councilwoman. Eric Hernandez reports how what was common knowledge in that neighborhood never reached City Hall. In a two year span, 112 calls were made to police concerning a home on Depla Street. That home is where Christian Moreno and Abilene Schneider lived. The two now facing charges for the February 24th dog attack that killed 81 year old Ramon Nakera and injured three others. Neighbors telling KSAT last week that the neighborhood was peaceful until the two moved in. It's been a nightmare living here with them, you know. The range of calls made to police include numerous types of disturbance calls, shots fired, a call involving child protective services, and two calls made that were animal related. One neighbor even showing us this letter they sent to San Antonio District 5 Councilwoman Terry Castillo. In it, complaints about nothing being done and stating, quote, to us in the neighborhood, we are fearful of our lives and concerned about our safety. We asked Castillo and she says she never received the letter. We asked the constituent around what time frame uh, that it was delivered, she did not recall. And then I asked if there was a follow up email or phone call and there was not. Castillo did go on to say that she is now in communication with neighbors. As far as Christian Moreno and Abilene Schneider, they are still in the Bear County Jail awaiting indictment. Each are facing a charge of injury to elderly and dangerous dog attack resulting in death. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And a bit more about those calls to police. The list of complaints is long. It includes three calls for illegal narcotics, 14 calls for someone shooting off fireworks on the property, 21 calls for loud music, two for shots fired, and four disturbance calls where a gun was involved. There are also three calls for traffic issues, two for a suspicious person, five calls to tell police that a wanted person was at the residence, and a call with concern for a child in the home. Again, of the 112 complaint calls, only two were animal related. Accused of stealing from storage, the Bear County Sheriff's Office arresting multiple people in connection with the robbery of 200 storage units across the county. BCSO says Xavier Servant, Joseph Cruz, Adam Anthony Cruz, and Christian Villanueva are all facing charges of engaging in organized criminal activity and burglary of a building. Deputies say their investigation into the storage unit burglaries began in November. The sheriff's office also posted some of the stolen items on their Facebook page. They include items like silverware, jewelry, money, electronics, and musical instruments. Deputies say the items were taken from facilities on Marbach Road, Culebra Road, and the 29,000 block of I-10. Now, if you believe any of these items were stolen that are yours, call BCSO at 210-335-6057. Now, you're going to have to provide some type of identifying information like a receipt.
A man on his way home from work this morning suddenly became the victim of an apparent road rage shooting. It happened around 630 on Roosevelt Avenue near Loop 410's access road. That's on the southeast side. The victim says someone in the passenger side of a white Jeep Grand Cherokee shot at him at least four times. Several of the bullets hit his truck on the hood and then flattened his tire. One of the bullets even grazed him in the shoulder. Drove around them. They tried to cut me off again and sped up to get away from them. They got ahead of me and then they just they started shooting at me. It felt like a burn, but I didn't realize I had actually been shot until I pulled over here. Mendoza also says he's glad he wasn't seriously injured. At last check, police are still looking for the shooter and the vehicle involved. Police also still searching for the suspects who led officers on a chase from New Braunfels all the way to San Antonio's southeast side. That chase began sometime just before 2 this morning on I-35 in New Braunfels. New Braunfels police say officers saw someone driving erratically, tried to pull him over. The driver sped off and led officers all the way to East South Cross in Pecan Grove. A passenger then jumped from the vehicle on the interstate. The driver crashed into a utility pole before running off. The second passenger detained at the scene as you can tell, this is a very much an ongoing investigation. Now to that tragedy south of the border. Two of the four Americans violently kidnapped in Matamoros, Mexico last week have been found dead there. Two others found alive. They arrived back into the U.S. this morning. According to the Brownsville Herald, they're being treated at Valley Regional Medical Center in Brownsville. As ABC's M. Wynn tells us what our government is doing to bring the dead home. A tragic ending to the search of four Americans kidnapped in Matamoros, Mexico at gunpoint last week. Mexican authorities saying two of the victims were found dead, their bodies for now held at a morgue there. The State Department announcing the two surviving Americans are already back in the U.S. This video appearing to show the group as they were being kidnapped by heavily armed men and thrown into the back of a pickup truck. The four Americans have been identified as Shahid Woodward, Latavia Tay McGee, Zindel Brown and Eric Williams. McGee's mother, who previously said her daughter went to Mexico for a cosmetic medical procedure, telling ABC News in a phone call that the FBI informed her her daughter is one of the survivors. I had to hold my heart. I said, I'm so appreciated. I was thanking the laws. I said, thank you, Jesus, a God. Michelle Williams confirms to ABC that her husband, Eric, is the other survivor. Mexican officials say he was found suffering from a gunshot wound to the leg. U.S. officials say gunmen began shooting at the group's minivan, which had North Carolina plates, then kidnapped the people inside. One Mexican bystander was also killed. This part of Mexico is a place Americans are warned not to travel to. This is considered by the State Department a level four, which says it's, that's what Afghanistan is, is a level four, that these are not places that any American should be going. This incident highlighting the drug-related violence occurring south of the border among Mexican cartels. The DEA and the FBI are doing everything possible to dismantle and disrupt and ultimately prosecute the, the leaders of the cartels. Mexican authorities say at least one person has been arrested in connection to the kidnapping, adding the bodies of the two killed Americans will be transferred to the U.S. later today. M. Nguyen, ABC News, Washington. Many Americans travel to Mexico every year for cheaper health care options, from dentistry to prescription medicine to inexpensive surgeries like this group was reportedly seeking. Coming up at 6, we're going to talk with an expert in so-called medical tourism about the risks they are taking. A man now in federal custody after trying to open a door on an airplane and stab a flight attendant. That incident all caught on camera. Tell them to bring SWAT to shoot me down because they're going to have to shoot. Authorities say Francisco Cervero Torres of Massachusetts began this violent outburst about five hours into a flight from Los Angeles to Boston. The video shows Torres pulling a makeshift weapon from his pocket, threatening to hurt the flight attendant. He allegedly told authorities he was trying to defend himself because he believed the flight crew was trying to kill him. Torres was taken down by other people on the plane. The flight was able to make a safe landing in Boston where Torres was arrested. We're f we are sure feeling the humidity out there today. Dew point of 67 at the moment, so very sticky out there. Temperature 80 degrees right now. Those low clouds stuck around well into the afternoon, preventing us from heating up much more. 89 Eagle Pass, Leon Springs right now at 77. You can see where the clouds have really held tight. 
That's Leon Springs, Bernie, Bulverde. Uh, Bernie and Bulverde right now at 78 degrees. So spring like this evening, partly cloudy for now, and then more fog and drizzle developing well after midnight and for the morning commute tomorrow. But on the mild side with that humidity near 70 at 10 o'clock midnight, we're at 68. A few cold fronts are in the forecast. We'll talk about their impact in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. We also want to take a look outside with your traffic authority camera and here is a great picture that explains the commute home on Highway 281. This is uh, headed toward Stone Oak. You can see it is at a crawl. Meantime, the southbound traffic moving along just fine. Very light. It's a nasal spray that can save a person from overdosing on fentanyl or opioids, but teachers and school staff need access to it. Well, soon that'll be the case at Northeast ISD campuses. Today, the NEISD Board of Trustees voting to make Narcan readily available at every school. It'll be kept at the school clinic. District police officers will also have it on hand. UT Health San Antonio School of Nursing providing the medication to the district at no cost. We emailed NEISD about whether they've had encounters with these drugs on campuses before this. The district said it is not seeing this trend in schools. Rather, the district is exercising caution and responding to the increase in opioid emergencies in our community and across the country. A warning now about canned tuna. The quick and easy protein lots of families find convenient. Problem is, it's known to contain mercury. Consumer Reports tested some of the most popular brands, and 12 of your size Maryland Warts tells us what they found and why they are recommending pregnant people avoid it. Canned tuna. It's cheap, convenient, and full of protein and omega-3 fatty acids. But tuna, just like other fish, can contain mercury. And if you eat a lot of fish, you can expose yourself to this potentially dangerous heavy metal. High amounts of mercury can lead to problems with fine motor coordination, speech, sleep, and walking. It's also a concern for pregnant people since the fetus's developing brain and nervous system are vulnerable. Because of canned tuna's popularity and potential risk, CR tested five popular brands for mercury. The results? Popular albacore tuna had the highest mercury levels, and light varieties had relatively low mercury on average, though it varied can to can. There were some cans we tested that had high amounts of mercury, and because you cannot tell which can that you purchase has high amounts of mercury, you may be possibly exposing yourself to dangerous levels of this heavy metal. For that reason, Consumer Reports recommends pregnant people avoid tuna. In response, National Fisheries Institute said the mercury levels were well below the limit the FDA allows in canned tuna and that these products are safe to consume. If you're concerned about limiting mercury, if you've eaten no other fish during the week, CR says up to 12 ounces a week of bumblebee chunk light, chicken of the sea light, safe catch wild elite, and starkiss chunk light tunas are the safer choices among the cans they tested. There are other nutritious seafoods that have naturally lower levels of mercury, including oysters, salmon, and sardines. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. It's still ahead on the news at five, how a local nonprofit hoping to improve children's music skills and their self-confidence with a spring break camp. It's next. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with what's coming up today on the news at six o'clock. A disease with a famous face behind it. Spurs legend and broadcaster Sean Elliott is working to raise awareness of kidney disease 30 years after his own diagnosis. What Elliott and a local doctor want you to know about this. Plus, a local man living with ALS has teamed up with some big names in media and show business. How his story will be part of a documentary that is featured at South by Southwest coming up soon. And what difference he hopes that that can make. All that and more today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. If your kids are interested in music and putting on a show, listen up. There's a local nonprofit running a DJ camp that can teach your kids over spring break. It's called the AM Project. It's hosted a DJ camp next week at the Little Carver Theater on the east side using whatever kinds of music your kids are into. And they'll learn how to mix, scratch, and spin records like real music producers. Run by music professionals, the camp 
aims to help kids develop not only a new artistic skill, but also self-confidence. Just the ability to, to learn a skill and then stand up in front of an audience and perform that skill is a very big confidence boost for them. They can teach up to 20 kids at a time. If you want some more information on signing up, you can visit their website at amproject.org. Let's go outside right now. We're going to go over the torch of friendship in the heart of downtown and 80 degrees. OK, not that bad, but the humidity still mm. very much around Adam. Yeah, it's a time of year we start to notice the humidity more and more frequently and this week is no exception. There will be a drop in the mugginess, but that's not going to be until we get into Sunday and you'll really notice the drop in humidity then. Otherwise, more rounds of fog and drizzle ahead of us as a result of that humidity and a few cold fronts are on the way, giving us the chance of a few showers and then the second cold front really dropping the humidity the most, but also temperatures will be up and down a little bit. Spring like here for a few more days. Take a look at the trend 84 tomorrow and Thursday for the high with that noticeable humidity Friday. We shave off 10 degrees, get down into the mid 70s and then we rebound back well into the 80s by Sunday only to fall off again. So it's one of those patterns where just be prepared for some noticeable changes, especially with that second cold front uh, that hits toward the end of the weekend and affects our weather as we get into next week. Look at the readings right now. 94 in Catula, 91 Carrizo Springs. Meanwhile, 79 in Kerrville, 78 Fredericksburg. Clearly where we have upper 70s, the low clouds really stuck around a lot longer and took longer for that fog to lift and burn off. But there's a bigger temperature drop to the north. Amarillo is at 50. Oklahoma City 44. Guymon, look at that, 37 degrees. That's because of a cold front that's draped across north Texas right now. The colder temperature, of course, on the north side of that front and that cooler air is trying to work its way southward. It's just not going to make it all that far for now because this boundary is really just going to wiggle around in north Texas for a few more days. And also there is some shower activity from New Mexico moving into parts of the panhandle of Texas. And with this front basically stalled out over north Texas, notice how it becomes a generator of some showers in the coming days. We're not going to see a whole lot of rain across the state, but North Texas, that's where the action is going to be with some showers and storms until the next cold front comes in and just pushes everything southward on Friday. And that's when we have our slight chance of a few of those showers and storms. That's generally Friday morning for us. And it's really a 30% chance. But you look at the entire precipitation accumulation including rain and snow over the next seven days, a good chunk of the lower 48 getting hit by at least some moisture. It's just this little area in the plains and West Texas and South Texas where we're missing out on some of that good moisture. So you look at the odds and we're at 30% on Friday, then up to 20% on Monday behind that next cold front. So unfortunately, we're not looking at anything too promising when it comes toward to the rain chances. Hopefully this changes a bit as we progress through spring. 81 was our high temperature today. The average being 72 and the record high 89 set back in 1929. We'll start the day tomorrow at 65 degrees. So very similar with the fog and drizzle, a little bit of dampness by noon. Still cloudy. Those low clouds lingering through the noon hour at 76 degrees and then a high temperature of 84 breaking out into some sunshine for the latter half of the afternoon, becoming partly sunny. That's 85 on the south side and west side of town, 85 in Poteet Canyon Lake, 82 for the high Bandera, high temperature of 84. So those two cold fronts, first being Friday, 30% chance of a few morning storms, and the next one on Sunday will still be warm on Sunday at 86, but then those temperatures fall off behind it a little closer to 70 for highs by next Monday and Tuesday with a 20% chance of showers Sunday night on into Monday as well. And speaking of signs of spring, Oh, look at Kennedy, Texas right now. This is a beautiful shot. Orion experiencing his first blue bonnet season. That's a great picture, isn't it, though? Oh, yeah, very nice. All right, so there we got to celebrate Clark. The girls yep. last weekend. There are four local teams that are still have a shot at a state championship in the boys side. Yeah, on the boys side. Okay. And right now we're going to take a look at Brennan. Yesterday we looked at Lytle, but we're going to do the Brennan Bears who advanced to the class 6A state tournament. And in the NBA, the Spurs went back to work today. Coming up.
wild experience. Like we really just did that. And you know, we didn't only just win, we won by 30. The Brennan Bears emphatically punched their ticket to state in big board sports. We continue our state basketball previews with the Brennan Bears who are back in state for the first time since 2013 when they were in Class 4A. Saturday, the Bears beat San Marcos 82-54 to to win the 6A regional final and punch their ticket to the UIL Class 6A state tournament. The 32-7 Bears will face off a 35-1 Beaumont United in the state semis and they are two of the best 6A teams in the state. At the end of the regular season, United was ranked second in Texas with Brennan checking in at number 14. Now we stop by Brennan high school early this morning where the Bears were getting ready for the Timberwolves. We're one of the first teams I bring to go to state. Football hasn't gone yet. Soccer, we have great teams, but uh, just, just to be one of the first teams to go to state in this, in this, at this school is a great thing. It's really exciting. Uh, you know, it's a first time experience for all of us. We're just going to have to play hard, play fast, and play aggressive, you know, play how we play. It's true confidence. There's nothing, nothing fake or pretend about it. They're, they're ready to go, and, and they've had a lot of experiences in the game against some really quality players, and we're about to, about to play some more of those, so we're going to see what we can make happen with it. Brennan will head to the Alamo Dome for the Class 6A state semifinals Friday night at 7 against Beaumont United. The San Antonio Spurs went back to work today after taking yesterday off. Now the guys are coming off back-to-back -back losses against the Houston Rockets in a home-and-home -home series. The Spurs were not at full strength in either one of those games, but as Pop said, you play with who you have. And the Spurs won't suit up again until Friday night, so this four-day break will allow them to rest up a bit from the wear and tear of games while getting to practice, which is something they don't get to do all that much. We like playing games, but... Um, I feel like everybody is kind of happy that, you know, we get to have a couple of days off and, you know, have some practice time. It's definitely good for me. Um, you know, if we did have, you know, today off or whatever, I probably still would be in the gym. I'm a gym rat. I let it get in the gym. Just, just get up a couple shots. And I feel like we kind of needed this just to get the body moving. Um, so it was good. Jim Rat loved to hear that. So the Spurs will play the Jazz Friday night at 7 at the AT&T Center. Utah will host Chicago Wednesday night before flying to San Antonio to wrap up that three-game regular season series with the Spurs. They're like playing Utah every other day. I mean, they played them <laughs> twice there. It seems like they it, play, right? It's like, what's the deal? Nah, it's just that weird, wacky NBA schedule. That weird, very well put, Larry. <laughs> exactly what it is. We'll be right back. Tomorrow is really going to be more of the same. A bit of dampness in the morning with some fog and drizzle, so reduced visibility for parts of the morning. Commute at 65 degrees, noon still cloudy, 76. And then by 3, 4 o'clock, we'll have some sunshine at 84 degrees. So for most of us in the mid 80s, some lower 80s off to the north, get to Comfort, Kerrville about 82, along with Canyon Lake as well. Then it's the same thing on Thursday. A weaker cold front arrives early on Friday with it the chance and the hope for a few showers and storms, but right now 30% so just isolated. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.